Hello and welcome to Live Wire Markets. My name is Chris Conway. On today's episode of The Pitch, we are discussing semiconductors and the impact that AI is having in that space. To do that, I am joined by investment strategist from Global X, Billy Leung. Billy, welcome to Live Wire. Thank you. We're here to talk about the impact of AI, particularly on the semiconductor space. What exactly is going on in that area at the moment? Yeah, so in terms of the semiconductor space, it's, it's been an old sector going around for a long time. And the traditional view on the semiconductor space is as long as you're making chips smaller, that's fine. That is all the development in semiconductor space. Now, to answer your question, what is AI doing it to it is because the demand for AI has been so strong in terms of power efficiency, uh, in terms of ability as well. So that's actually changed how semiconductor space works in the in that they're not just trying to make it smaller now, but much more efficient. So there's technical aspects of it in terms of how to mold it, in terms of what molding material they use, and also in terms of the structure they, uh, they do with the chips. So a lot of things are happening because of AI demand. You touched on some of the breakthroughs there. What have been some of the big breakthroughs and what sort of, what's the big thing that's going to happen next? Yeah, year? sure. So this is arguable, but uh, there's a big breakthrough in the upstream semiconductor space, which are the machines called the lithography machines. Mm-hmm. So these are the machines that actually uh, use light to actually imprint on the chips to allow it to be much more smaller and much more accurate. So in terms of uh, the, uh, the point of these machines is to actually have much finer lights. So we've now reached to a level where we are using extreme ultraviolet light to actually imprint these on the chips right now. So this happened about four to five years ago and what's happened is that it's allowed us to make smaller chips. So I'm sure you've heard of uh, different phones or different computers using seven nanometers, five nanometers and even right now the latest Apple chips are using three nanometer chips and this has only been made possible with the EUVL technology. So Billy, how does that impact on the the breadth and the depth of the opportunity? And I think more importantly, how do investors stay on top of these advancements? Yeah, sure. So in terms of the whole semiconductor space, it's huge. We have companies that make the focus machine machines, and we also have companies that are just simply making the chips or the foundries. And we also have the chip designers as well, and we also have equipment manufacturers as well. And a joke I always tell about uh, talk about with investors is that there's actually 15 layers or sub layers of equipment manufacturers. So in terms of the depth it's huge but I think the key to note is that in terms of semiconductor it's all about accuracy and the size so in terms of the whole chain you need companies in everywhere with niches and with strong R&D because it's actually such a uh, technical development in the uh, technology space. Billy, the Global X uh, ETF that you guys offer in this space is appropriately called SEMI. It has an unconstrained approach and you're looking to invest across sectors and uh, geographic definitions. What does that mean in practice and how does it help investors? Yeah, correct. So I think we've talked about a lot in terms of how big the semiconductor space is in terms of actually machinery that makes the chips, in terms of the uh, machineries that go through in testing, processing and cleaning the chips. This is all very wide. So we have different companies in each of these segments doing these because of the accuracy required in each of these fields. And not just that, like you said, it actually spans geographically. If you look at the semi, our composition in terms of geographical, in terms of uh, US, there's about 60%, roughly 60% coming from the US, and there's also companies coming from China, uh, Japan, and South Korea as well. So we have to understand that this semiconductor space is a global space, and there is a need to actually, A, go across different segments and industries, and B, go across geographies as well. Billy, thanks so much for sitting down with Lovewire. Thank you for having me. If you enjoyed that episode of The Pitch as much as I did, make sure to give it a like and don't forget to follow our YouTube channel because we're adding lots of great content every single week.